Littleton, Colorado is one of my favorite suburbs around Denver, and it is our featured city of the day. We're going to take a look at its history as well as what it's like to actually live in Littleton, Colorado. And during this video, we're going to take a deep dive into its lifestyle, its affordability, and its real estate. And during this, we're going to compare Littleton to the rest of the Denver suburbs. So if you've been thinking of moving to Littleton or just want to know more about the city of Littleton, then this video is for you because we're going to cover all things about Littleton, Colorado. Littleton is probably one of the best definitions of what a true Denver suburb actually feels like. This isn't one of the newer sprawling suburb feels where, you know, you, know, you have all the new strip malls. It's an older town and it has that charm and it has this cute little downtown area that during the Christmas season is actually one of me and my family's favorite place to go to because they do such an incredible job with decorating. But you actually get this feeling that you're in your own little bubble, you know, which is what a lot of people are seeking when they're looking for a specific neighborhood around Denver or to live in a suburb where I know there's a lot of places in this country where, yeah, you have a city, you have a suburb feel to it, but there's no real downtown-ish sort of feel, and Littleton absolutely fills that niche. Now, when I was younger, I didn't hear much about Littleton, but as your kids start to grow older, you know, the whole city of Denver has the school choice in program, so you don't necessarily just go to your home school wherever the bus is going to pick you up. I mean, that's how it was when we were kids, but that's not how it is here. You can literally choice in to just about anywhere you want around the city, and yeah, you have to go through the process of being accepted. However, the chances are generally fairly high to get your first one or two pick on the list of where you want to go to. Now, during elementary schools all around the Denver metro area, most elementary schools are rated extremely high. Once you get into middle school, they really start dropping off the map as far as the ratings go. But however, Littleton has done an excellent job at maintaining their middle school's rating as well as their high schools. So what we've had, you know, as I'm in my young 40s here when our kids are starting to get into that middle school age is we've had a lot of our friends actually move to Littleton and now we truly understand why. I'm Alex Saldana, local real estate agent here in Denver, Colorado, and I've been helping hundreds of home buyers and owners relocate and moving to the Denver area since 2010. And if you're new here and you want the best information about Denver, consider subscribing. But if you have any questions, it's as easy as calling, texting, emailing, nights, days, weekends, I got you covered. So let's get back to Littleton, Colorado, which is located in the southwest part of the Denver metro area. And it's located a little bit north of Highlands Ranch, just to the west of Centennial, and not too far off from the foothills. So you got about a 10 to 15 minute drive to get to most hiking, biking, trails, climbing if you want it, everything that the foothills has to offer, as well as Chatfield State Park is just to the southwest of Littleton. Now the access to Littleton, it depends on where you are in the city of Littleton. If you're on the southern end, you're right by 470 now. However, this is the free part of 470. So from I-25 to the west on 470 all the way up, that's the free section of 470. 470 on the eastern side of I-25 is the paid toll road. So you have a great highway just to the south of you at 470. Then you also have 85, otherwise known as Santa Fe, which goes all the way from the southern part, which goes all the way up into Denver. And those are going to be your main access points and highways getting around Littleton. Now, if you're looking to head to the high country to go skiing from Littleton, you're looking at about an hour and a half drive, which is pretty typical for around the Denver area. And that's going to get you to Breckenridge, Keystone. Uh, but you can make your drive a little bit shorter if you want to go to A Basin or Loveland. You're looking about an hour and 20 minute drive without any traffic. Remember that on Saturday mornings, Sunday mornings, it's going to take about two to two and a half hours to get to most of the ski resorts depending on what time you leave and that is a very important thing to note 5 30 in the morning you're doing okay 5 45 in the morning ugh, you add about 30 minutes onto your drive just by that <laughs> that 15 minute difference and now if you're looking for some great hiking slash biking trails, you can just head to the southwest somewhere like Deer Creek Canyon, and it's about a 20-minute drive if you're in the center of Littleton. And if you're looking to catch a flight out of DIA, you're going to be looking at about a 35 to 40-minute drive. And once again, I'm bringing up all these heavily trafficked routes because if you are thinking of moving to Littleton, Colorado, and want to enjoy everything that the Colorado lifestyle has to offer, it's likely you're going to be going skiing, hiking, biking, or catch a flight at some point. Now for the bigger perspective on what to expect for a commute time on your 
daily average commute for Littleton, Colorado is 26 and a half minutes. The city of Littleton was actually founded in 1890 by Richard Little, and they've done an excellent job at maintaining that quaint little town feel from then up until now. Today, you can go into downtown Littleton and you find a bunch of cute little boutique shops, some great restaurants, some antique shops, just an incredible little small town, downtown sort of feel to it. Now, the city really started to blow up in the 50s and 60s due to its proximity to the Martin Marietta facilities, which produced the Titan rocket and other aerospace products, which then later became probably what you know of today as Lockheed Martin. Now, a big draw to the city of Littleton is the proximity to the foothills that are 15 minutes away to give you everything you could want out of the Colorado lifestyle from hiking, biking, cycling, camping. Everything you want is just outside your door by a few minutes. Now, you think that would draw in a huge population that would want to move to Littleton. However, there's not a ton of space to actually build in Littleton. It's not a huge city, and so the population hasn't expanded nearly as much as it has in, let's say, Denver, Aurora or some of the northern suburbs. And today, with a population of just over 45,000 people, it is on the smaller side of cities around Denver. And now to break down some of the stats inside of Littleton from an outside third-party source, I love going to niche.com. If you haven't been to their website, go check them out. Uh, I'll have the link in the description below. You can check out Littleton or whatever city that you want. But we can pull up a report card here and some specific stats about the city of Littleton. And we can see that it's rated really, really well overall. We get an overall rating of an A, A for public schools, C plus for housing, likely because we're above the national average for housing prices. If you want to live in a great area, you're going to pay a little bit more. However, that doesn't calculate in things like property taxes and the other cost of living in comparison to other places. So you always want to calculate that out. A, as good for families, it's a great spot parks, rec centers, everything you could possibly want in Littleton. If you're moving your family here, B plus for jobs. Overall, the whole Denver market is incredible for job opportunities now from DTC just being about 15 minutes to the east of Littleton and all the tech jobs here, as well as the need for construction because we are a growing city overall. It's really easy to get a good paying job in the Denver metro area. Cost of living has a C minus once again going back. They primarily base that off of housing costs, so take that with a grain of salt. A for outdoor activities, like I said, 15 minutes to the west, and you can have anything you possibly want for outdoor activities. B minus for crime and safety. You know, over the last few years, for some reason, we have a ton of car thefts around the Denver metro area, and we're one of the highest in the world for that. Most of those are just crimes of opportunity, so just make sure you lock your doors, don't keep any valuables in there, uh, but there's not a lot of violent crimes happening in Littleton. A- minus for nightlife, they do have a very vibrant downtown area, as I've stated before, so you can stay within your own little bubble within Littleton and not have to drive, you know, 15, 20 minutes away to head out to a bar or head out to a restaurant. B plus for diversity, B for weather, that should be an A plus in my book. We have all four seasons. The summers aren't nearly as hot as what they are in the south. The winters aren't nearly as cold as what they are in the Midwest. This weather here is absolutely perfect in my opinion. A for health and fitness, you know, we're just a healthy city in general. And then A minus for commute. So overall, like we do really well on the rating system compared to a lot of places in the country. That's why there's been such a huge draw to Colorado because our lifestyle is just incredible. Now, I might be a little bit biased towards the city of Littleton. I don't live here. I live east in Denver. But if you want some unbiased reviews on niche.com, you can come here and you can look at reviews that other people have left for the city of Littleton. Now, as for parks and open space, they have more than 1,400 acres within the small city limits, as well as more than 200 miles of trails. And to the west just a little bit, they have Clement Park, which gosh, I wish they had this sort of stuff when we were growing up. It would have kept us out of a whole lot of trouble. They have a huge skate park. They have this water play area for kids. All of this is free. Huge fields, soccer, football, whatever you want to do, you've got access to it. And it's butted up right against Johnson Lake Reservoir, which is a beautiful little lake that you can go fishing at and take a hike around. 
And just to the southwest of Littleton, you have the Chatfield State Park, which you can go camping, you can go hiking, you can go paddleboarding, fishing. We go there often because the ease of access is incredible. You can swim around, cool off on a hot day, and that park alone has dozens of miles of biking and hiking trails and everything you could want right outside your door. And then just outside of Chatfield State Park, you have one of our favorite places, which is the Denver Botanic Gardens at Chatfield. This is the lesser known of the two Denver botanic gardens this is more of a farm kind of ranch feel to the botanic gardens we go there generally at least twice a year once during their fall festival and once at christmas time because they do an incredible job lighting up these enormous trees and it's just a beautiful spot and it's way less busy than anything happening during the holidays in downtown denver now let's talk about the schools in the city of littleton because whether or not you have kids schools do affect you you're going to be paying property taxes and it does affect the resale value of your home. And today there's 24 public schools in Littleton serving about 14,000 kids. And today the city of Littleton school district is rated number six out of 180 school districts in the state of Colorado, rated number nine with the best teachers out of 180 school districts in the state of Colorado, and number 10 on the best places to teach. And the student to teacher ratio is 16 to one. Now being that I'm a real estate agent, sharing the stats is all I can pretty much do. So what I'm gonna do is have a link below in the description that you can go and read reviews and check out everything you want about the city of Littleton school districts if you're considering moving here. Now let's talk about something big that affects all of us because whether you rent, whether you own, real estate does affect our quality of lives. All right, so if we take a high level macro overview of Littleton real estate, we can see here at the end of the first quarter in 2023 that the median price in the city of Littleton is 620000 Now that is up from the previous month of 582000 Now cyclically, this is fairly normal because spring in Colorado is the best time to be a seller right before the summer months hit when lots of people put their house on the market. We have a supply demand imbalance every single spring. So if you're looking to sell your house, spring is the best time to do it, especially in Littleton. Now, if you're wondering what real estate prices have done in the city of Littleton over the last decade, we can look here going back to 2013 when the average price was 236000 compared to today at 621000 We've increased about 260 plus percent over the last decade in real estate prices. And this is accounting for single family homes as well as condos and townhomes. And after looking at these numbers, I gotta say I'm not truly surprised by this because of how desirable Littleton is in comparison to the rest of the Denver suburbs. So now that we know that the median price in Littleton is 620,000, let's just compare it to some of the other cities around and see how it really stacks up. So looking around the map, starting with Denver proper, the median home price in Denver, Colorado today at the end of the first quarter in 2023 is five. 565,000. And now if we go a little bit northwest, we can head up to Golden, which is also a super desirable little suburb, and their median home price is 730,000 today. And heading a little bit east to Denver, we can see Aurora at 475,000 as their median price today. And heading to the southeast of Denver, we've got Parker at 646,000, and then heading up further north and to the west, Broomfield at 650000 So we can see as we look around this map here, Littleton it just kind of falls in line with a lot of the other cities around the Denver metro area. But let's go a little bit deeper here and find out what exactly does the median price in the city of Littleton at $620,000 buy you today. saw were active and live as of today on the market. However, by the time you see this, because 
Our market is pretty hyper in the spring, as it is in 2023 as well. Those homes are likely not going to be for sale anymore. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a link to our preferred Littleton homes in the description below that you can click on and you can actually get to your inbox every single day if you want. Now, while looking at the median home price in Littleton, maybe that's what you can afford. Maybe you can't. But now's a good time to actually go over what your monthly mortgage payment would be on the median home price in Littleton. And I want you to pay attention, especially if you're coming here from out of state or looking at a house in Littleton from out of state. And I really invite you to crunch these numbers yourself. So once again, I'll have a link to our mortgage calculator in the description below, because what you may find is that our property taxes are so much lower than anywhere else in the country, except for literally two other states. You might be surprised at how low your monthly payment is in comparison to where you currently live. So let's break this down. On a $620,000 house with a 20% down payment, on a 30-year fixed, it's 6.25%, which is what rates are running today. With $3,000 a year in property taxes, that's the big one to calculate in from where you are now to here, because we're only about half of a percent of the property value. With $250 a month in home insurance, calculates out to be about $3,300 a month on your mortgage payment. And now this leads us into what the actual cost of living is like in Littleton, Colorado. So we can take a look at here and see overall, it looks like we're about 6% above the national average for the cost of living, with housing being the biggest expense, being 23% over the national average. However, our utilities are 13% under, groceries 6% under, and transportation just being break-even with the rest of the country. Now, comparing the actual cost of living can be really tricky because if you lived in the same place your whole life, you may not know how expensive or inexpensive somewhere else is compared to what the pay rate might be, how much you are paying for housing, what the taxes look like. So there's a lot of variables. So this this is where I love to jump in and show this map from Redfin's data center that shows the migration into Denver. And the biggest places people are migrating here from are going to be Los Angeles, the Bay Area, and then Chicago, Illinois. So let's see, are we more or less expensive than these three areas? And the first two, you probably are thinking, yeah, you're going to be less expensive than LA or the Bay Area. But Chicago, are we more or less expensive in general? Because I know a lot of people who live in Chicago in three to $400,000 houses that are magnificent but let's look at what the averages are. So if you're looking to move here from out of state, I'm going to invite you again, go down in the description. I'm going to have this calculator here for you by Forbes, who allows you to punch in your numbers to see if your cost of living is actually going to be greater than or less than wherever you're moving here from. So let's take a look at the first one, LA. So if you made $100,000 in the city of Los Angeles and you were moving here, what this states is that to maintain the same standard of living in Denver from LA, you would need to make approximately $73,000. So the cost of living is 36% lower in Denver than it is in LA. And on another note, the average household income around the Denver metro area household income is about $120,000. That's two income earners on average per household. Now, if we look at the Bay Area, this one is crazy. So if you made $100,000 in San Francisco and you were moving to Denver, the money needed to maintain your same cost of living would be $62,000, which is 62% lower than San Francisco to live in Denver. So when people are complaining about all these people from California buying up these houses here because $600,000 is cheap in comparison, well, there's a reason why they think it's cheap because they know what happened to California prices. I mean, you can just look at Toronto as well and what's happened to their real estate market. If you want to know how high prices can go, you've got some two extremes there. So let's take my old stomping grounds, Chicago. I was born and raised there. I moved here in the year 2000, I believe, for the first time. And then I was here second time, got Got hit with an IWAC curse, but this is what was fascinating to me. So I think of Chicago and I think of $300,000, $400,000 nice houses. When you calculate in everything else in the city, particularly property taxes, what you can see is that if you made $100,000 in Chicago, it's actually less expensive to live here in Denver. You'd have to make equivalently $92,000 and your cost of living would be 9% lower in Denver than it would be in Chicago. So that's why this is such a fascinating tool to check out because this calculates in everything, groceries, transportation, property taxes, rent, everything that you could imagine and puts it in an easy to understand format. 
Now, if you're still with me at this point and you're thinking to yourself, man, Littleton might be a great city for you to explore and possibly move to, my cell phone number is here. Feel free to call me, text me, nights, days, weekends. I got you covered with any questions that you have. Now, if you are thinking of moving to the broader Denver metro area, maybe it's not Littleton, maybe it's Golden or Broomfield, I'm going to invite you to watch this video up here because it applies for everything. And these are going to be the 15 top reasons why the Denver metro area may not be the city for you.